What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, we are going to be talking about one of the books that I saw sell this week on the weekly Heritage Comic Auction. This was one of the most surprising sales I saw from the entire week, and it's something that I've been seeing lately, so I thought it'd be interesting to talk about these specific types of books and what I'm seeing in this market. Stay tuned. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So this one just caught my attention because I have been seeing more and more of these pop up for sale. And I feel like in the past, usually they were just thought of as kind of like a quirky relic from the past. Uh, but I've been really seeing some big, big numbers with these books lately, and I've been seeing them pop up a lot more. So I'm going to pull up the the weekly heritage comic auctions. This is this weekly auction on heritage where golden age sells on Sunday, silver age sells on Monday, bronze up through modern sells on Tuesday. And right here, I've got the, the recap for that auction. You can see, so a pretty big auction, 700,000 uh, for this week. I'm actually probably gonna do another video on all the top sales and everything. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to pull up that, that recap and I just order them from most expensive to least expensive. So what were the big numbers that they that they achieved? And I generally like to kind of like scroll through these and see if there's anything that really jumps out as a big sale that surprises me. And one of them did. And it was this one right here. 15629, Little Archie Giant Comics Bound Volumes Group of Two. Went for $5,280. So that's this right here. So if you are not familiar with bound volumes, uh, it's something generally you would see in the, the Golden Age and the Silver Age. I don't think you usually see it much after the Silver Age. At least I don't. But basically what people would do, as you can see, they would take these comics and then they would put them into these, put them all together, group them together, put them into these bound volumes. So you basically have a book. It's like a trade paperback, like an old school self-made trade paperback. And Sometimes, I mean, sometimes they're actually made at the, the publisher, but a lot of times I think it was people just doing this themselves. And in this case, it was these little Archie books it went for $5,280 for just 10 books. I mean, this is a, this is a big, big number, especially since these books in general don't often sell for that much outside of issue number one. If it's in pretty nice condition, they generally don't sell for all that much. So this is a situation where the combination of these together into these books actually had significantly more value than the parts broken up, like the individual pieces, which I've seen that a few times now with some of these bound volumes. And so I thought it'd be interesting to, to talk about here because usually the way that I'd price them out is that you price out what each individual book would be on its own. And then you add that all together. Maybe you add a little bit to it just for the, you know, them being bound. And, you know, these are actually really nice bound volumes. You can see that they aren't all torn up. A lot of times these are all torn up, uh, but actually a nice bound volume. So you give a little, you know, premium to that. But if we look down in the, the description for this, it says includes the first 10 issues, Little Archie 1 through 4 and Little Archie Giant Comics 5 through 10, trimmed and bound into single hard uh, cover volume. These issues come straight from the publisher, feature bright, glossy covers, tan but supple pages, and averages fine or better conditions. So this means this was one that was put together, it sounds like, by the publisher instead of someone who is doing it for their own you know, personal enjoyment or whatever, which is why they're a little better condition. But they are all trimmed. So that's one thing where a lot of times these bound volumes, the books are trimmed. And if you're familiar, familiar with trimmed books, they have significantly less value than their untrimmed counterparts. Now, there are some bound volumes that are untrimmed. There are some where they're just put straight in there, not trimmed. Those ones tend to carry a little more value. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, too. But I thought it would be just interesting to take a look at what these books go for in their parts and then what they went for as a whole. And then we'll talk about some other bound volumes and some what they actually look like when people take them out and the damage that happens to the books depending on how they're bound, the types of things that you might wanna look for if you were thinking of picking something up like this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to GPA, which is one of the pricing tools that I use. And I've got Little Archie number one pulled up. And you can see this book actually tends to have quite a bit of value, especially if these books are in fine or better condition. 
And you can see here a 7 0 went for 2400 last year, an 8 0 went for 3600. But down in the lower grades, a 4 5 went for 400. But you got to remember, these books are trimmed. And when something is trimmed or restored, like it's going to get a purple label, like guaranteed it gets a purple label. But when something is trimmed or restored, it goes for some fraction of the unrestored copy. The lower the grade, usually the higher the percentage. So if you had a trimmed 2 0 book, it might go for. 80% or 85% of the untrimmed book. And if you have a trimmed 7.0 book, it might go for 20% of that untrimmed book. So you have these very big differences when you have a restored book that's high grade versus a restored book that is lower grade. So at least with Little Archie number one, if this pretend is a 6.0 to a 7.0 book, I would think maybe $500 like on the upper end for that book. So that's this is probably the most expensive book in this entire thing, $500. Even if you multiplied that by 10, $5,000, you are already less than this total combined. And the other books go for a lot less than issue number one. So if we jump to say issue number two, and we pretend this is a six or a seven O, I mean, look, a six O blue label, 350, a five, five went for $89, a four O 118. I mean, a trimmed copy might go for 150. And I'm probably being a bit generous there because these books, if you actually took them out of these bound volumes, depending on how they were bound, if they use glue, they're going to be much worse condition than a six or a seven O. They're actually going to be like a two O, maybe a one five. And so I'm actually being pretty generous, I think, on the values for these individual books. Then if we look at number three, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but I did, I did on the side go through all of them. Number three, I mean, look, like uh, five, five went for 139, four, five went for 139. I mean, number three is probably worth a hundred bucks. So I went through and I priced each of those out what I thought they would approximately go for. And that's without all the damage from removing them from the bound volumes. And if I added all those together and on average, they were around a hundred dollars a piece came out to $1,500. Then say we give it a like a little bit of a bonus for being in these nice bound volumes, 20% bonus, $1,800. These sold for $5,280, almost 200% over what that estimate was, almost three times that estimate. I mean, this is significantly more than these books would be, even if they were in this condition, universal outside of these books, untrimmed. I mean, this was a very, very uh, serious number that was paid for this. And this is not something that's totally unique. I have been seeing some pretty significant numbers being paid for these bound volume books. And so I thought it would be interesting to talk about some other ones. So there's this one that sold back in December. This is a bound volume of Pep Comics number seven through 12. These ones actually have a fair amount of value. Went for 3,360. I think this was actually a pretty good buy by the person that picked it up because you can see here in the description, it says the comics have not been trimmed prior to binding. So that means you should be able to take these out and you would have a universal label. You would not get a purple label, but if they did use glue, like if there's glue in there, then that means you're likely getting something in that one five to two range because it's just going to tear up the spines of these books. But even with that, with these books, I feel like this was still a, a pretty good buy. Then if we look at this one here, Archie Comics 25 through 30 bound volume, again, these comics do not appear to have been trimmed. Now <laughs> that's, that's definitely a risk. You might think they haven't been trimmed and maybe it ends up that they are, and then you're going to take a huge hit. This was six books for $1,320. If you were going to take all of these out, again, they'd be in that 2.0 type range. These books, you're paying over $200 a book. That's actually quite a bit for this era with that type of condition. If they were in the 5.0 range, somewhere like that, four to five range, pretty good buy. But, but given if these had to be taken out and they were 2.0 type grades, they might be lucky to get like 150 a book. This is actually a very big number that was paid for it, but still pretty cool to have Archie 25 through 30 for, you know, $1,300. Now this was the biggest bound volume sale that I've seen, at least in recent memory. I'm sure there's maybe some bigger ones. Maybe there was some with like action one or something, but this was pep comics number 19 through 24. And this one scared me a little bit. I remember seeing this one come up for sale. 
I actually was really interested in this one. And looking back, if these actually aren't trimmed, I feel like this was a very good purchase. But if they were trimmed, which is just the fear, I mean, it says in the description that it says, unlike a majority of bound volumes you see, the comics included here were not trimmed in the binding process. Still scares me a little bit that they could have been, that there may be some things missed. Maybe they were trimmed. But otherwise, this was actually, surprisingly, at $43,000, a good buy. And the reason is Pep Comics 19 through 24 includes Pep Comics 22, which is the first appearance of Archie. This book alone, if this was, say, a 1.5 when it gets torn out, is still probably a $35,000 book, maybe $40,000. Then you've got Pep Comics number 20. This book alone, about $10,000 in that type of condition. Then you've got the second appearance of Archie. This is maybe a $2,000 book. So you can see here, like the total value in this bound volume, graded at least, is probably minimum $45,000, $50,000. And it could be more depending on the damage when these are taken out. You do have to be aware of things like condition. And there are some notes in here. Uh, For example, it says the back covers of 19 and the front cover of 24 have separated from the comics. So basically your best case scenario is a 1.5 and you're probably getting a 1 for those. And it says there are some issues with the 22. Uh, The shield figure on the cover has been traced in ballpoint pen. I don't know if we can actually see it here, but it says it's very noticeable uh, when you actually have it in hand. But still, I mean, you can see what the damage is like on this spine. I mean, you can actually see what that damage is going to be like. I mean, there was definitely glue used here. There's going to be, you know, it might be a completely split spine. Like your best case might be a 1.5 when this thing gets taken out. This is what you would generally expect to see with a bound volume where glue is used. So it's just the type of thing that you need to consider if you're looking at buying one of these bound volumes. But after thinking about this more, I think this was probably a pretty decent pickup. At a minimum, it was you could sell all the other books and you could keep a Pep 22. And then you've got a first Archie, which is extremely rare, like a super rare book. Now, coming up next week, there's actually a pretty cool bound volume, this uh, Uncle Scrooge bound volume. This is actually a pretty big key for for Uncle Scrooge. I think it's four color 386, uh, among other, you know, some other Carl Barks type books that are in here. Uh, But yeah, so there are these bound volumes that I'm seeing appear more and more often. And I thought the other thing that I would talk about is what these books tend to look like after they're removed from those bound volumes, what they look like graded, what they look like raw. So you can see here, there's a pretty big range of what you can end up getting with grades in these bound volumes, and it depends how they were bound. Like this one, this Archie 2 got a 4.5. It's actually very high grade for a book that was from a bound volume. But you can see, it looks like either they didn't use glue or they used very little, and instead, you've got these little holes here. And they used some type of thread or something like that where they threaded all the books together and didn't actually glue them all in or they used minimal glue. So very little damage to the spine. I mean, you can see like there is some color left there, but it seems like very minimal damage to the spine of this book. Then if we look at this one here, <laughs> this is from a bound volume. This is the other extreme. This is where you have a lot of glue. And you can see they also likely had some type of thread or something like that for the the binding process. And it just destroyed the book when it came out. So this book's probably getting at best a 1.0 and maybe even a 0.5. And so that's a huge range that you can get with these books. Here's another example of some Archies where you can just see the amount of damage that can, can happen to these books when they're in these bound volumes and they're removed. And so... It's not always going to be that four or five, you know, a lot of, a lot more often it's going to be something like this and they might be trimmed. That's the other big risk. So if you go on to, to Heritage, you can actually just do a search for, for bound volumes and CGC and you can see a wide variety of the types of grades that you might get for these bound volume books. We've got 0.5s all the way up to, it looks like 5.0 is about the highest I think I've seen on here. But on average, you're generally seeing in the range of 1.0 to 2.5. That's typically around where you're going to see bound volumes. And you're often going to have purple labels because these books are going to be trimmed or there's going to be some glue that can't be removed. There are going to often be issues that are out there with these books. But taking a look at some individuals, Action Comics number three, I mean, that bound volume, it probably had an Action one in it, which is just wild. Let's see if that was actually in the uh, in the top here. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, Action Comics one through 24 bound volume. 
2010 sold for $143,000. That's crazy. I, I don't know. I don't want to read this whole thing. I don't know if this was trimmed or not. Wow. That is a, that is a pretty incredible bound volume. <laughs> 143,000 seems like a total steal now for action comics one through 24. I mean, absolute steal, but let's look at some of these other ones. I've got a pep comics number 32 that came back a three, five. And here you can see it's actually got this kind of like this tape material. You will often see this with these bound volumes, this kind of like darker colored tape that's put on the spine. Then you've got Walt Disney's Comics and Stories. This one's a 4-0, really nice. And you can see this one used that, you know, maybe not any glue or very little glue. And it's got these little holes all along the spine from that process. Pep Comics number 18. Again, this is what this is what I feel like you would often see. This is pretty common. Just a lot of color lift, a lot of the paper being removed at that spine. And you're going to get in that 1-0 to 2-0 range. And the last one here, Slam Bang Comics, number two. You can see restoration includes small amount of glue on the spine of cover. So they weren't able to get rid of all the glue. Maybe that could be removed and you could get it back to a, a blue label. But you can see this is the damage that you're going to expect to see. You're going to have things like hole punches and holes through the cover, that kind of thing with these bound volumes. But I just thought that this was an interesting set of books to talk about because I have been seeing more and more of these bound volumes popping up in these auctions and they've been achieving some really serious numbers like this. I mean, like this one going for at minimum three times the value of the books that are actually in that volume. And so this one, I just, I have to think that because it's from the publisher, because it's in these really nice books that are kept in good condition, that that probably played a fairly significant role in the value of these. Because for example, if we take a look at this Pep Comics 7 through 12, this is what this bound volume looks like. It's just totally wrecked along the spine. It's not a good looking book. And with these types of books, it's much more likely somebody is going to take this apart, separate it and sell all the pieces individually, just like I am guessing happened with this Pep Comics 19 through 24. But I'm guessing with this one, this little Archie comics uh, set of books that whoever bought these is keeping these as is because that's really where that added value just has to be coming from because otherwise, man, that was a lot of money <laughs> paid for some little Archie comics. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Saw something interesting. I mean, I know that it wasn't until I really started getting more into the golden age of comics and just a little deeper into comics that I really learned about bound volumes and, and saw these. And I know a lot of times people think like they're this travesty where you've got these books that were just, you know, ruined or, or damaged. But clearly there is a subset of collectors that do really like them and are willing to pay that premium for them. So definitely something to keep your eyes open for. Just always remember Trimmed versus untrimmed. There's typically a very big value difference in those bound volume books. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, all that kind of stuff. I get more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos, subscription button is right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.